Beauty Shopper's Closet. My name is Laura Winley, and this web series is a spinoff of my blog, lindyshopper.com, which is a blog about swing dance clothing, shoes, accessories, and other things that dancers may find useful. Today we're going to talk about moth prevention and how to get rid of a moth infestation. Uh, this is a very important topic to me uh, as someone who collects clothing and often a lot of natural fibers that attract moths. I'll start off by saying that I'm not a scientist, so I can't speak to all of the logistics of moths invading my home, planting their eggs on my beautiful garments, and their hatched children eating holes through my clothing. But when something as valuable to me as my wardrobe is being attacked by insect larvae, I'm very much, let's just throw the kitchen sink at this and the toilet and a stick of dynamite at the problem because it needs to go away as soon as possible. I'd like to thank the menswear group F Style Emporium on Facebook, which is run by New York swing dancer Neil Blangiardo, who if you were on the Yehudi chat forum, uh, he was effervescent, you know, back in those ancient days. Um, and the members of this group are not only an excellent resource uh, for style, inspiration, and clothing resources, but they also provided a support network and advice when my closet was under attack. Um, I suffered several casualties a few years ago, but none since that time, and I think the key was figuring out what preventative methods would work for me and my clothing and my particular closet and being diligent about seasonally uh, checking in and replacing and refreshing those preventative measures. So let's start with a classic. Uh, we're going to talk about cedar. Uh, cedar wood contains natural oils uh, that repel young and kill young moth larvae. However, uh, the effect doesn't last forever and cedar alone won't, you know, get rid of moths, but it does help and it smells pretty good. So I've incorporated it into my moth prevention. I mentioned in episode one that I had inherited a cedar chest from my grandmother and before I filled it with sweaters and blankets, I re-oiled the wood insides uh, so that the cedar smell would come out. Um, so I've got this uh, cedar oil here. Um, Giles and Kendall, and I'll put links uh, to everything that we talk about till today uh, below the video. Um, so I just put this on a rag and wiped it over the wood. I let it sit for a couple of days to sink in, and then I filled up uh, my cedar chest. And in order to do that, you'll need to continue to do that periodically where you re-oil so that the cedar uh, remains uh, fresh, the smell. Uh, you can also sand the wood if you are the industrious type like that, which I am not, um, but the sanding also releases uh, that oils and the smell from the cedar wood. Um, I've also got several other cedar, uh, if, you, if you don't have a whole chest or room for a chest, you can still use cedar. Um, you can literally just put a sort of pan of this oil somewhere in your closet so that the odor is released. There are also these little, um, I guess you could call them diffusers. Uh, they are the, essentially a little disc and it opens up inside and there's a wick that absorbs the cedar oil and makes it stay around a little bit longer. And then it's not like you have this puddle of oil that you have to worry about as much in terms of, uh, you know, sort of turning it over and getting cedar oil on everything. So these little diffusers are really helpful. Um, you can also purchase things like just a little block of wood on a hanger to put in your closet. And then I also have a little bin of cedar items, blocks, cubes, balls and you can essentially put them I put them in this container to re-oil them uh, cover everything with oil let it soak up and then I can distribute these uh, in various places throughout my wardrobe um, so cedar oil is a great resource another thing that is a good smelling option that doesn't uh, kill the moss but repels them is lavender and how lovely is that so I I purchased little lavender sachets like this one right here and it has a little string at the top so that you can hang it on something. 
So I like to put them next to you on the hangers of my really nice suits and wool coats. And so you can just have this sort of lovely scent in your closet and uh, protect and repel the moths from your nice wool garments or your natural fibers that moths are attracted to. Uh, and we're going to take a step into another room and look at a closet there. So this is the closet that I share with my husband uh, for our daily garments. And I'm bringing you over here to the not as fancy side of things to show you this garment bag in action. Garment bags are great for items that you store in off seasons or don't wear as often. I have a lot of suits for my day job as an attorney, and that just really adds up to a lot of wool. I often leave my regular closet open, so having a large garment bag is kind of like having a closet within a closet, and it gives a, an immediate physical barrier to the moths here. Uh, the garment bag could be an individual one or a larger one like this that I'll show you. And um, the container store has, this is where I got this one, has some really nice uh, garment bag options. So we'll just unzip this here and open it up here. And hi, here's a bunch of wool. So as you can see, my very lovely wool things remain protected, sort of a closet within a closet. And this nice flap here, again, it's like a physical barrier and it's obviously not impenetrable, uh, but every little bit helps. And then when it is off season and I dry clean everything and bring it back, I can store it in this garment bag and it's ready to remove and take out for the next season, hopefully fingers crossed, without moth damage. Another preventative measure are moth traps, which are essentially paperboard with a sticky substance on one side that has moth pheromones in it. And the idea is that the moths will fly into your closet and be attracted to the pheromones and then get stuck in the sticky stuff and die and not destroy your clothing. Uh, for what these are, they can seem a little pricey to me because it's literally, like I just said, paperboard and sticky pheromones. Uh, but it's worth it to me uh, considering the investment that I've already put in my wardrobe. Uh, there are two brands that I've tried and would recommend. Uh, the first is Greener Mindset, Clothes Moth Traps, say that three times fast. And also F's Style Emporium's number one recommended moth traps are these uh, moth prevention moth traps. And these kind of go in and out of stock on Amazon. And so I kind of keep checking back periodically to see if they have them and buy them when they do have them in stock. Finally, we have the nuclear option. I once heard them described as the smell of hope from someone who frequented estate sales because if the clothing smelled like mothballs, it was more likely to be in wearable condition. The good, mothballs kill moths and larvae. The bad, the chemicals used for mothballs are toxic to humans, are carcinogens, and are flammable. Um, if I'm going to be exposed to these toxins, I'll say the damage has already been done because my mother used mothballs in our house growing up almost to the extreme. No, definitely to the extreme. And I would find myself going through drawers and storage and removing mothballs that she had placed there so that I could even begin to smell normal and not like an old lady or an estate sale. As an adult, I use moth cakes and plastic hanging baskets like this one. Only in places where I'm storing wool, usually in a closet or a garment bag that remains closed, uh, one moth cake at a time, so Ina's moth cakes here, and I usually put the basket closest to the garments uh, that need the most protection. Um, sometimes I will use retired hosiery or thin socks and put a cake or a couple of mothballs in the hosiery or the socks and then put those in a plastic uh, storage container or a place, you know, bas basically clothing that I'm not going to wear for a season and, as a preventative measure. It's important that you wash your hands after touching moth balls or moth cakes and that the chemicals not touch your clothing, which is why I like to use the baskets and uh, hosiery to essentially create a physical barrier between the substance, the chemicals, 
and the clothing itself. I've tried to eliminate mothballs and only use other methods and that has failed for me. So I keep coming back to them, but I do think it's important to augment the mothballs with other methods so that I don't have to rely in such a great quantity on these chemicals. I check in on my moth resources every three months and make sure that I swish my sections in the closet. So you just sort of run back here, give this a little swish because moths like to live in dark places that don't have movement. So if you are frequently in your closet and sort of moving things around, that can only help you with the moth prevention. <sighs> prevention can also mean not bringing moths into your home. When I'm bringing in vintage garments, depending on the condition and the smell, I will either send them straight to the dry cleaner or I will put them in a plastic bag and place them in the freezer for at least eight hours, but it's usually more than eight hours because I forget that I put something in my freezer. So it could be a couple of days, maybe a week. Maybe don't do that <laughs> um, because the cold will kill the moths and the larva. It's also a good idea, particularly if you've sweated in or spilled food on a garment, to have it dry clean because the moths are attracted to those areas of your garment that are particularly, shall we say, ripe. I'll post links in the description below for all the things that we talked about today, and you can collect your own moth repellent arsenal. Keep in mind that none of this is foolproof. You can bring in the moth eggs with you anytime from anywhere which is terrifying. We do the best we can with what we have and we just sort of pray that the moths will leave us alone. <laughs> I do actually employ all of the methods that we talked about today. It's part of my wardrobe management, which is a huge priority for me and something that I take very seriously. Once you have everything in place, it doesn't really take that much time to maintain. I don't even set a reminder uh, the seasons sort of let you know when it's time to do a check-in, uh, when I'm changing out garments, and when I move things around to wear them. So what if you already have moths? What if you found moth chews or those little track marks in one of your wool hats and you were just filled with terror and rage and how do I even do this? So I had a very public, well, maybe not super public, freak out in the F's Style Emporium Facebook group. And I'm going to read a passage for you from my post talking about everything that I did when I was in the middle of the infestation. So here we go. Number one, all wool from the closet with the moth infestation is at the dry cleaners. Two, Refilled moth cake baskets, re-oiled all my cedar blocks, and added lavender sachets. Number three, washed and steamed everything hanging in that closet that's a natural fiber. I'm told that uh, high temperatures can kill moth, eggs, and larva. Number four, called the exterminator and left a message. That was a dead end. They're not going to do anything. You're on your own. Number five, additional moth cakes, lavender sachets, canvas suit bags, End All Insect Killer, an organic, which is an organic spray insect killer. That, not that you spray it on your clothes, but inside the closet that is emptied because you're powering through this process. Okay, back to the list. Pheromone moth traps and seed oil diff diffusers have been ordered. And then my plan for that night was to finish washing everything from that closet. Everything from your closet. Terrifying. Number two, vacuum the closet. And three, check other closets throughout the house for damage. Other closets and rooms with clothing have been sealed and reek of mothballs when I open them. So if the moths are alive in there, God help us all. So <laughs> that was a lot. And I wrote that when I was in a panic. Some additional suggestions from F Style Emporium were LED lights that you can buy and install in your closet that repel moths and also running a fan in your closet, which I think would work better for someone who had a walk-in closet and the idea is that it would keep the clothing uh, moving as the fan uh, blows up against the clothing. I did neither of these because I felt like I had already expended a lot of time and resources over an entire weekend 
saving the contents of one of my closets. I don't recommend dealing with an infestation if you can help it. So I hope that my tips today were helpful and have not made you too paranoid about a moth infestation. Some things may not work for you and your wardrobe, and there are a lot of options out there that I haven't explored in this episode. The internet is a big place with lots of advice, and I wish you the best of luck in your future wardrobe management. If you'd like more information about Lindy Shopper, you can visit the blog at lindyshopper.com. If you'd like more information about my endeavors outside of Lindy Shopper, you can visit laurawinley.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and please stay safe and healthy until I see you again.